Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to continue with our world's reviews, this time with the matchup between Humanoids Victor and Tally Swain. And I really wanted to show you guys this one because it shows just how effective wave control can be. So one thing I said in my wave control video was that the reason you normally slow push and crash the first three waves is so that you can build yourself an initial advantage. Now, if you're in a matchup like this, where Victor just has such a huge advantage anyway, like from the get go, you actually don't need to do that. You can go straight to the next step, which is generally going to be freezing the lane. And you're going to see that here. Um, so Victor is much, much stronger than Swain in the early game. He's got lower cooldowns and also he just does more damage. Um, and so you'll see that Victor doesn't really need to crash three waves uh, in this matchup because he already has the advantage he needs. This time, rather than the advantage coming from creep advantage and level advantage, it just simply comes from a matchup advantage. Another thing is like you don't need to feel as bad about freezing in the extreme early game against a champ like Swain just because he can't do anything with his priority anyway, so you can choose just to play instead for the 1v1. Um, so if you do this, like if you control the waves like this in a matchup that's bad for you, obviously it's not going to be good because they're going to have the ability to trade on you um, to push you in. But if you're in a matchup that you win anyway, you'll actually just be able to start denying your opponent um, from the get-go. So champions like Corky, Swain, Vega, champions that are very weak early, um, you can definitely look to punish them with it. So you'll see the wave is already in a position here where Swain is going to have some difficulties getting the CS. Either he's going to have to take significant damage to walk up and get them, or he's going to be forced to use cooldowns on it. So you can just see that he queued for that CS. This is going to be very important because when these cooldowns are used, it means that Humanoid can look to punish them. Um, so make sure to look out for that. Um, I will of course bring it up, but pay key attention to that, how Swain is going to be forced into using his cooldowns for CS, whereas Humanoid is just going to auto for CS and is going to be able to use all his cooldowns on Tally. So just keeping the wave here, thinning it out, this keeps him completely safe from any ganks, not that Grave Swain really has great ganks up anyway, but you know, it does keep you safe from that as well. And it has the added bonus of making Swain vulnerable to ganks. You can see here, pulls the wave a little bit up. Again, keeps this freeze just in the position where Swain is having like a lot of difficulty CSing it now. He's starting to feel scared of Lee Sin. You can actually see on the minimap there that Lee was below mid. Um, and it's, it's, it's going quite difficult for Swain. He has to choose like with his jungler, does he come and help? Um, so you can see Swain has gone down here, but is actually going to give up some creeps for it. Uh, and this is mainly because, again, Swain doesn't have the power to crash this wave um, and is forced into using cooldowns to get it. And all this time, Humanoid is just hitting uh, Swain every time and Swain's slowly running out, again, forced to use that cooldown. And that means Humanoid can just like walk him completely off the wave. So just already in these first like three, four levels, Swain is at a massive deficit, mainly because of his um, wave control. Definitely should not be pushing in a matchup like this. And Humanoid is taking full advantage of it by realizing that, okay, he's actually strong enough that he doesn't even need to push the first two waves. He can just skip straight to the next step of extending his advantage. That's really important. Like when you're playing the lane, like understanding why you do certain things with the wave, like you push those first three waves to build that initial advantage, but then to extend your advantage, there's better ways to do it. And freezing is a big one of them. So the wave is starting to bounce back out now. Um, there's not much you can do. Eventually it is going to push back out, but that's fine because now you can use this to get level advantage from being able to push the wave first um, and also have creep advantage if you do any auto trading. So it's also going to have some advantage here. Still trading. Now Swain actually was forced into using his TP because he was chunked down. He didn't want to lose too many creeps. This is very important. When you force uh, TP out of your opponent early, you get a lot of options. You can either just stay in lane for a bit longer and get a better base and then just come back with an item advantage. Um, or you can kind of like manipulate the wave in a way that to make them lose stuff. So here, Humanoid kind of got baited. It looks like he had vision topside and his jungler near, but they weren't like that close. Um, so he took a lot of damage here. Now this is where there was a big mistake made. So from Humanoid's perspective, the wave is pushing back to Swain. Um, Swain has used his TP, but basically Humanoid is too low to crash this wave. He's going to have to base TP. Uh, it's like pretty unlikely he could bring jungle to help because the enemy jungler is here as well. So essentially he's going to be forced into base TP. Now Swain here, he has a couple options. He can either try pull the wave up and match bases with Victor, or he could pull the wave and stay in the lane with Victor. Um, but what Swain chose to do here was actually the worst option, which was to try push the lane. So the problem with this is whenever you try and push into someone that still has TP up, they're always going to be able to TP back and hold the wave. Um, and they're also going to have like more mana and items than you because they just TP back. So this was a big mistake by Swain. 
um, tries to push the wave in, and so what Humanoid does, he TPs back to lane, realizes that, well, Swain is half HP and just used all his mana on the wave, so there's nothing stopping him from just freezing this wave again. So, freezes the wave, Swain doesn't have TP, cancels the recall, and Swain's in a really tough spot here because he has to get the wave fixed um, by his jungle in mid. But it's going to be pretty hard to do so because Victor is so much stronger than Swain at the moment, not just because of matchup, but now because he has item advantage um, and also like had a mana advantage. And on top of that, because it's like a competitive game, the jungle and support are here to make sure this wave stays frozen. So Swain kind of has no choice but to base at this point. And that's really bad because he just misses an entire cannon wave of creeps. And this is basically all from wave control, both humanoids good wave control and from Swain's poor wave control. So clears this wave out, again, perma-freezing the wave, there just really isn't any reason to push. Um, one thing I've been seeing a lot from you guys in coaching sessions is pushing, pushing without any reason. You actually do kind of need to have a reason behind why you're pushing, whether that's like for your 1v1 or because you can use the priority or something like that. But if you can't, you just kind of, like if you can't do any of those things, you're just giving um, free CS to your opponent. So don't, don't push with no reason, try at least have some thought behind it. Now this is a very scary spot for Swain to be in. The wave is still frozen, as, as we said before, um, but also now he's not only at an item disadvantage, but at a level disadvantage too. So it's going to be very hard for him. Like Victor is level six here and can easily just fight Swain pretty much no matter what Swain can do. Um, so Swain's walking up, like wants to try fix his wave, is going to use cooldowns on this wave here. And then because these cooldowns have been used, Humanoid knows he's so much stronger, can just walk into him. Um, the ult was there, you can't really see it. it's a visual bug at the moment, um, but forces Swain's flash and yeah, the wave is still frozen. So this entire time the wave has been frozen, which has made um, the lane more difficult for Tally to play because he's been forced to use cooldowns to kind of clear out the wave and he's not strong enough to harass Victor and also makes him gankable the whole time. So Humanoid pretty much just through wave control, like there's some other stuff like cooldown punishment and stuff like that. But wave control has been, you know, by and large, the, the biggest difference between these two players. And it's starting to lead into a very significant advantage for him. So um, Swain's pretty low here, and there's a couple options. You could look to base here um, as, as Victor, but you kind of don't want to base and still give Swain a free wave. So your kind of goal that you're thinking about here is you just want to make sure that Swain loses a wave when he bases. So you can see here that while you could base and get back on the map earlier, there's not much Victor can do with the extra tempo. So if you're a champion like Akali or Fizz or something, something that's really going to use this extra tempo of being on the map earlier than your opponent, then you can look for this base here. But if you're a champion that's more built for the 1v1, doesn't really use their like prio and tempo that well, you're better off just continuing to play for the 1v1 advantage. You can see that's why he placed this ward here to see if his opponent is basing or not. Um, and now he knows that Swain is low mana again, so he's just going to keep pushing this in. And he's just going to eventually force Swain to lose a wave when he bases. That's like really the big thing here. You're trying to cash in your advantage of having like more HP and mana by forcing your opponent to base first, which is exactly what he's going to do. So Swain, he ends up basing here after using all his mana on this wave. Um, and this means again that Humanoid gets an advantage because uh, Swain is going to lose some XP here. Not only that, but Victor is going to have more gold to spend on this base and you can see just right now look at the difference in items like not only is humanoid level 8 to level 7 the item advantage is just insane um and it's going to be pretty hard for for swain to really do anything at this point you know i think um once you get into this position there is honestly not too much that you can be do and on top of that because he lost his flash in the 1v1 actually gets ganked when he comes back to mid um, which again was kind of a wave control issue uh, so yeah, the lane is pretty much over from this point. There really isn't much way for Swain to recover, but I do want to show one more thing. I'm just going to skip ahead here for a bit. One more thing kind of to do with wave control. So after Humanoid goes for base here, gets his Leandries. Now here's something I see a lot of players do is when they have enough wave clear just to shove in their opponent continually, that's all they do. Um, from this point on, they would just either wave and they wouldn't harass their opponent at all. Again, the problem with that is that if you use your cooldowns to push the wave, your opponent is then allowed to catch the wave under their tower for free without having to, um, without being harassed because you've used the cooldown on the wave and they don't have to really like move up and contest the wave. Um, so instead what Humanoid is going to do after this wave here is he's just going to make sure that he's pushing the wave with auto attacks but he's actually using his E on his opponent on cooldown. That's going to mean that when this wave finally does crash onto him, um, that he's going to have like very little HP. Um, you can see here, every E is being used to hit his opponent. If it hits the wave as well, that's great. Um, but he really doesn't want to crash, like use everything on the wave, have Swain farm it for free, and the wave to just like 
come back to being neutral and nothing to happen. Instead, he's using his advantage to just walk up, E his opponent on cooldown, and the wave will eventually push in just with his auto attacks as well. And that means instead of this wave crashing and Swain being full HP and Victor having no cooldowns, the wave actually ends up crashing with Victor having all his cooldowns and Swain's on one HP. So I really wanted to to point that out there again, that just fast pushing the wave is not always the best, especially if you're a champion that's playing for strong 1v1. Generally, um, for building an initial advantage, pushing the lane is very valuable, but for extending advantage, pushing the lane often doesn't do much if you're a champion that can't roam to other lanes. So I think that's going to be it for this video, but just to kind of TLDR everything, um, if you've watched my wave control guide, you should understand that pushing the wave initially um, helps create advantage, but then you can freeze the wave to extend that advantage. Now, if you just start the game with a big advantage initially, just because you have a hard winning matchup, um, then you can just start freezing from the get-go. And you can see that like continually he was freezing the wave, you know, making sure it was difficult for Swain, which forces cooldowns out of him. And then he punished those cooldowns by trading. And that basically led him to having such a huge advantage over Swain. Now, also quickly, I want to say, like, what could Swain have done better here? Because I think some of you guys will be wondering that. Well, from before the game started, there are definitely some things that can change. First off, Swain is a very bad matchup into Victor, and Swain was actually picked into Victor this game, so I think that is pretty bad. Um, but, like, after that happens, there are still ways to make this matchup better for you. Like, I don't think it's a good matchup, but there's ways to neutralize it. I think take Phase Rush instead of Conqueror. Makes you a lot stronger early, means you can get yourself out of Victor W, out of Victor R. Just allows you to trade a bit easier. I think on top of that, going um, Doran's Ring versus a heavy, heavy Poking Champion instead of Corrupting Pot is very, very greedy. So I probably wouldn't go for that. Um, another thing that could be changed is I would probably keep the wave in the middle or on your side in this matchup. I don't think you really want to push to him and you may be able to make use of like your swaying gank setup if the wave is like a bit closer to you. So I think the early wave control was bad. And I think finally the real nail in the coffin was was this point here. I think here um, when the wave is like this and your opponent still has TP, you either need to come here and match your base so that you come back to a frozen lane or you just need to stay in lane here. And I think like maybe the reason he did as he felt like he didn't have the sustain to do so um perhaps again fixed by corrupting pot um yeah also maybe amp tome isn't the best here although there aren't that many other options like it would really just be a dark seal so yeah overall there are definitely things swain could have done better in this matchup for sure um but humanoid took big advantage of the mistakes that swain did make and also i think swain into victor is not the best choice so guys that's going to be it for this video hopefully you guys learned something once again and you enjoyed the world's matchups as much as i have it's been very hype i always look forward to worlds every year and if there's any other matchups again you guys want me to cover please let me know in the comment section below otherwise don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time.